We're alive, brother. Praise God. I'll be back. Glory. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He's in the house. Amen. You're in the house, but he's in the house. Praise Amen. God. Amen. Amen. So we just thank God for what he's doing. Uh, I, I mentioned that earlier before Sunday school. It's, God has allowed us to do exploits in the last three weeks uh, in the property, in the building, and things of that nature. But it's not all about the building. It's all about him. Amen. Worshiping God. And uh, we just thank God for what he's doing. I thank God for providing this place for us. Thank God for you. Without you, this wouldn't happen. That's right. We need God, yes, but we need you. Amen. So you are important to this ministry. Everyone is important to this ministry. I don't care how young you are or how old you may feel or how old you Amen. are or whatever. You are important to this ministry. Amen. Brother Larry, I can't do anything but pray. But that's important. We need somebody. We need prayer warriors, praise God. Amen. So we thank you. We thank you that's Amen. listening all over the world, praise God, through Amen. Facebook Live and other means and things of that nature. Amen. You are also Amen. important to this ministry. You that's in the foreign lands all over the world, be it Nigeria, Australia, Hallelujah. wherever it may be, South Africa, wherever. You oh, are important to this Come ministry, on, praise Come God. On. Hallelujah. Yeah. Come because on. we see that you, the oh, hits uh, on this program that goes out all over the world, it encourages us that somebody else uh, heard the gospel of Jesus Christ, praise God. So Amen. everyone Hallelujah. is important to the ministry of this gospel of reaching the lost. Amen. Amen. Whoever Hallelujah. dreamed that we could sit, st stand here in Williamson, North Carolina, and reach people from all over the world without actually actually traveling all over the world. Come on, come on, come on, man. Hallelujah. That's God. That's God. Amen. Glory. Great media here where we can uh, do this great thing. Thank God for the modern technology. Thank God. Uh, how, how would you survive this week without a cell phone? Come on, come on. Talk you to could me. survive, but it would be difficult, wouldn't it? Yeah. Because we, we become so dependent on, on, a, on, a, on, a, uh, uh, on that. How could you survive without an ATM card this week? It would be difficult, wouldn't it? Yeah. Amen. Because we've got so used to the modern, and when it's used in the right way, it's good It's good to have the modern technology. It's yeah. good to be able to drive up to an ATM machine and say, I, I need $50 or I need $100 yeah. or whatever, and get that money out. Amen. It's good to be the, the convenience, say glory to God. But at the same time, it's the same convenience that we're enjoying that the Antichrist is going to use to set up his kingdom. Oh, brother. Now, we don't need to get discouraged over that because we do. When that happens, we'll be in heaven, praise God. Amen. The rapture Hallelujah. will take place, amen. Hallelujah. We'll be together forever and ever and ever. Amen. Amen. If you're laying in the bed in a hospital room, we welcome you to Growing Together Ministry. If you're laying in a lazy boy, or you're sitting on the couch, or you're riding down the highway, we welcome you to Williamston, North Carolina, and the house of God. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Today, we have felt his presence in the worship Oh, Father, we worship you. We worship you. We worship you. And we recognize your presence. Thank you, Father, for your presence. Encourage us all this morning in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Turn with me to Jeremiah chapter 7. <coughs> Jeremiah chapter 7. We're going to begin there at verse 1. And the title of the message, Your Presence Does Not Qualify You for the Victory. Amen. Your Presence 
does not qualify you for the victory. Your presence in the house of God does not qualify you for the victory. Your worship this morning and the Spirit of God moved in a powerful way does not qualify you for the victory. And as we read this morning, you will see the complete picture by the end of this message. But your presence in the house of God does not qualify you for the victory. I want you to receive that all over the world and all that are sitting here. That your presence in the house of God, or how loud you sing, or if you don't sing at all, does not qualify you for the victory. There's more to it than your presence in the tabernacle. Amen. It's more to it than having a loud voice. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, we must determine here in Jeremiah chapter 7 verse 1, who are we listening to? I would prefer very honestly and graciously that you listen and read the word of God. If more people would read, 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 the word of God, they wouldn't ask so many questions if they would read the word of God for themselves. There's a lot of words going out in our communities right now. From Washington, D.C. to Detroit to out in California to all over our world, a lot of words are going out, but we'll find today and we know they don't all come from God. Just because you're saying it's God doesn't mean it's God. That's right. It must be backed up with the Word of God. Amen. That goes for me Amen. preaching or Pastor Larry Lilly or Pastor Lisa Ray or whoever. Whoever. I don't care how good they look, how good they smell, how, how nice their vehicle looks or how nice... Uh, house or mansion a preacher lives in. If he's not hearing from God, you can determine it if you're reading the word. If you're not reading the word, he can take you anywhere and control your mind. And when your mind is controlled by a person, that is witchcraft. I want to say that again. When your mind is controlled by another individual, it is witchcraft. And it's witchcraft craft going on in the church right now. Right. And we must understand that. Verse 2 says, stand in the gate of the Lord's house. Jeremiah is speaking to Judea. Stand in the gate of the Lord's house. We have stood here this morning, we've sat down and proclaim there this word and say, Hear the word of Lord of the Lord, all you of Judah, who enter in at these gates to worship the Lord. Coming and going regarding their worship of God. But in reality, it was worship that God would not accept. They were in the house of God. Probably looking real good, women, looking real good, men. And they were singing loud. They practiced a whole lot. But they were living in sin. So that goes to tell me you can be on the worship team of the local church and be living with your boyfriend or your girlfriend or doing drugs or doing whatever. And it's unacceptable to God to be in a position of leadership in the house of God on the worship team of preaching and you're living in sin. Amen. 
There's no ins and outs about it. But Judea was doing this. They were singing loud. They were in the gates of the tabernacle. And many people come in and have a loud voice or a similar small low tone voice and speak great words, but they're not in God. Thus says the Lord of hosts, Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 3. The God of Israel amend your ways and your doings, and I will cause you to dwell in this place. And I will cause you to dwell in this place, referred to Jerusalem and the inheritance that had originally been given to them. Once again, the choice is placed before them. Once again, they refuse to heed the word of God. There are many today that are in church. They hold positions as Sunday school teachers and they are not heeding the word of God. God help us. God help us. God help us. Amen. If you're living in sin, your sin will find you out. Amen. If you're living a life that is not close to God, it will catch up with you. And if you've ever been saved, you've ever been a Christian, the Holy Spirit's going to convict you so bad, you're going to be one troubled young man or young woman, or older man or older woman. You are going to be troubled. And thank God for that trouble. Verse 4, trust you not in the lying words saying, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord are those. They were all talking about the temple of the Lord. And they were lying words. They had a hidden motive in what they were doing. God help us on this Sunday from Williamston, North Carolina, that whatever you do, you do not have a hidden motive, that you are trying to reach out and be an individual, you're seeking something from it. Amen. As God has given you life, and God has given me life, we are to give of our lives. Amen. We are to give all that we can give because, and I'll say with true test of this, God will bless you if you give. God will bless you if you give not only financially, but if you give of your time. That person that looks with their head down walking in the Walmart or your local market or convenience store that looks depressed. God will bless you for giving them a kind words. But Amen. sooner or later, your lying words are going to show up. Your lying words are going to get in the way and you're going to be found out. Amen. And they were doing this in the temple of God. Verse 5, for if you thoroughly amend your ways and your doings, Jeremiah is calling out to them, amend your ways, repent of your sins. You can't live in victory this morning if you have secret sin going on in your life. And Judea had secret sin going on in their life. If you thoroughly execute judgment, between a man and his neighbor. Also saying that a partial repentance would not be accepted. There's a lot of people going around here in verse 5 of chapter 7 of Jeremiah asking God to forgive them of things, but the main sin, the root sin, is still there. They're still practicing it. You cannot... Uh, Walk into the presence of God and receive the victory unless you clean out every area of your mind. Your conscience must be cleaned with the blood of Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus Christ sets you free. 
So your presence does not qualify you for victory this morning. There's a lot of people with good church attendance and they give big money, but that's not enough. Everything must be under the blood of Jesus Christ. And why in verse 5 you amend your ways and your doings that Jeremiah continues to say this to the people. They had seen God at work. We have seen God at work and we've turned our backs on God. How dare us to turn our backs on God? How dare us to go down another road uh, away from God when God's been so good to us. God's been real good to us. And then we get so comfortable. We get so comfortable in what we're doing. We walk and slide away from God. We allow the devil to talk to us in our mind and cause us to stay home from church. Come on. We allow the devil to create something in our mind to distract us when we need to rebuke that that's going on in your mind and get off your duff and come to church. Amen. Because God wants to use you. The devil has just got a victory if one person stays out. Because how do you know not the day you stay out is the day that your voice was going to bring victory to somebody that needed help. We got to stop being so selfish, selfish, selfish and think about other people. Our presence does not qualify us for the victory this morning. And we've got to be able to give of ourselves and love everyone. No matter how they look or how they may talk, we must love everyone. Staying home and feeling sorry for yourself will not give you the victory in God. You'll become depressed and before long, you'll have several health problems. But coming to the house of God and worshiping with other like believers and you truly repent of your sins, God will replace your loneliness with victory. I want to say that again. God will replace your loneliness with victory in him. But you've got to, it just can't look good. Uh, buh, 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 I'm here. There has to be some action. Amen. There has to be some action. You've got to repent of all your sins. Amen. Surrender your life to God. That God can use you. Right. And partly surrendering won't get the job done. Have you ever been to the altar? And you prayed about that other person. They were worrying you to death. And the whole time you were the problem. That's called partial repentance. When you want to walk in God. And when you want to walk deep into the Holy Spirit. You got. I'm wrong. David Ray, you're wrong. I do that a lot with my wife. After I've talked and spoke my mind in the flesh. In a nice way about certain in certain things I have to hold back and I say honey the Holy Spirit has spoke I gotta shut up when you start walking in God closer and closer when you want to talk negative the Holy Spirit will stop you when you want to talk negative about another person or things the Holy Spirit will stop you because the Holy Spirit will let you know you got things going on in your life that ain't all right. You need yeah. to get and repent, preacher. Yeah. Repent, preacher. Yeah. 
I love telling it like it is. It gives me victory. It makes me free. I feel like I could jump over this beautiful podium pool pit that I'm standing here. It's handmade. It's so beautiful. I feel so light as a feather right now. I can fly. I can fly. I can fly. I can fly. Because I know that God has set me free. But I still need to be slapped. I still need correction. But my presence here this morning does not qualify me for the victory. Glory to God. Turn with me over Jeremiah chapter 7. I'm getting ready to have fun. Verse 8. Behold, you trust in lying words. Be careful the words you hear from folks. I think the end of time, dear brothers and sisters, did God already tell us about it or that there was another prophet coming to tell us? Yeah. Did the Bible already specifically tell us about the end times, Matthew chapter 25, 4? Does the Bible speak of another person coming to reveal the end? If he did, let me know. I want, to, I want to find his name in the word of God. So I think it's best you trust what the word of God says. And, 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 and then if you'll go find the money trail, there's a lot of money coming in behind those words they're saying. Follow the money trail in where they live. That cannot profit. Behold, you trust in lying words that cannot profit. Maintaining temple worship. They would be protected from all evil. They thought we can be in church every Sunday morning, every Wednesday night, pray every day, and still not receive the victory. Right. Verse 9, the core, the meat is coming up. Because some people, they need to see it to believe it. Will you steal murder, commit adultery, and swear falsely, and burn incense under Baal, and walk after other gods whom you know not. Verse 9, Jeremiah chapter 7. It gives out some sins. And we all that are in God know what sin is. But these same people that were stealing, murdering, committing adultery, swearing falsely, and burning incense, they were worshiping in the tabernacle of God. Come on here, somebody. Brings it to life this morning, doesn't it? It's going on today. It's going on in our churches today. And because people have referred to their cell phone as their Bible, they've left their Bible at home and referred to looking at a screen to get the scripture. They're not getting the complete story. We have led people away from the word of God by the way we've done in our churches. Uh, we've led people away from the complete word of God by giving them pieces of it that makes them feel good. Uh, we need the complete word of God there where they see it all. And don't be so lazy you've got to look at the word of God on a cell phone. Uh, buy yourself a Bible or even better, go dust off that Bible that's in your house. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Why we got so lazy? Yeah, that's right. Be because many people, and I've seen it, during church, they're on Facebook. They're thumbing through Facebook. I've been into big churches. I see them. You just look around and you see them. We become... A dependence on our phone, our cell phones. And we leave out the Bible. I want to know what thus saith the Lord says. I want to know what thus saith the Lord says. Not what 
Bishop T.D. Jake says, sorry to disappoint you. I want to know what thus saith the Lord says. Because if you're a Christian and you'll get into the Bible, the Bible God will increase your life. Verse 10, And come and stand before me in this house, which is called by my name, and say we are delivered to do all these abominations. Refers to God knowing not only the actions of these false worshipers, but also the thoughts and intents of their hearts. Verse 10, God through Jeremiah, through the Holy Spirit speaking to Jeremiah, makes it very clear this was false worshipers. The intent, what is the intent of your heart this morning towards God? What is the intent of your heart this morning, your will, your mind towards God? I want to say it a third time. What is the intent and the will of your heart, your mind towards God this morning? Are you seeking to get closer to God and seeking His presence but you must come through the cross of Calvary. You must come through the cross of Calvary on this Sunday. Hallelujah. Your presence does not qualify you for victory. Your presence does not qualify me for victory. I must have all my sins under the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hey. Oh, yes. That's right. And do you know not having patience can be a sin? Amen. Not having patience can be a sin. Yes. And I have to work on it. But I'm man enough to admit that. Amen. God, crucify my flesh. Crucify my flesh. But I say to you, heart to heart, all over the world, and looking you square in your faces today, this type of preaching is, is not wanted in, anymore. Because, Pastor, you stepped on my toes. You went into an area of my life that you shouldn't have went. This type of preaching does not make people walk out feeling good. Because I don't walk out today feeling good. Because the Holy Spirit has spoke to my life also. We're still walking in this flesh but because God called me to preach and I'm standing here does not qualify me for the victory. I must stay in complete asking God to forgive me of all my sins every minute of every hour of every day yeah. and keep subject and keep an eye on my flesh and on myself, and on my mouth below my nose. And watch what I say. I want all of us to not get angry with anyone. I don't want any of us to get upset with anyone. But all I want us to do is for our individual life Ask the Father right now, all over the world and right here in Williamston, North Carolina, forgive me of all my sins. Father, I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. Forgive me of all my sins. I repent 
of all my sins before you right now, Father. I repent of all my sins. The only way to victory is not your presence on the worship team or your presence in this church today. The only way to victory is through the cross of Calvary that you're covered in the blood of Jesus Christ. We repent. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we thank you all over the world for joining us. It's been a different, different service. Father, thank you for all those that are watching. And thank you, Father, for reminding me that my calling is to Williamston, North Carolina, and through online to all over the world this morning once again. Stay put, son. Stay put. Thank you, Father, that this is a work that will help Martin County and the surrounding counties as we grow, grow, grow closer to God and then we grow close more in number because we surrender all to the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh, I feel the presence of the Holy Spirit. I feel the presence of the Holy Spirit in this tabernacle. Devil, you just lost another one. Victory. Are you going to keep on? Devil, you just lost again. Glory to God. Devil, you just lost again. Someone was troubled when they walked in here this morning. They're not troubled anymore. Because they're free in you, Jesus. Hallelujah! They're free, free, free in you. Oh, I praise you, Father, and I thank you for growing together ministry, reaching in 47 countries of the world. 47 countries of the world for your glory, God, for your glory. We're just servants here in Williamston, North Carolina. We love you all in the name of Jesus. Have a great week. We'll see you Wednesday night live from Growing Together Ministry Church right here in Williamston, North Carolina. Praise the Lord. 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 Praise the Lord.